not going, I'm assuming that this is going to be an interactive um, webinar. So hopefully I'm not going to take a lot of time uh, in my answering of the first three uh, questions from Dr. Ilham. And then we open the microphone to all of you uh, or the chat room, I guess, to all of you to participate. Um, and hopefully we will field the questions and we try to answer as many questions as possible uh, throughout the next uh, hour. Um, so the uh, first question, uh, which is um, AIMS initiative at IIIT and what it is and um, uh, how it came about. Um, first of all, let me emphasize and stress a, um, a specific point, and that is, although um, AIMS, as it stands right now, uh, advancing education in Muslim societies might sound as a new initiative, um, it's actually an old one, as old as Triple IT itself. Um, because Triple IT, from the beginning, uh, its interest and um, the projects that uh, actually the founders um, have taken on were always around um, education in the broader sense, uh, which is, uh, you know, the formal education as we define it uh, here. Um, within the AIMS initiative, the formal education, uh, K-12 and all the way to graduate school, uh, the informal, uh, which is any extracurricular uh, activities that one might take on uh, while in formal setting uh, of education, and the non-formal, uh, which could include really anything, you know, whether it's a uh, uh, you know, a program, a training program that might be attached to a mosque or um, um, attached to some sort of, uh, you know, an organization that someone is associated with, whatever um, format that this might uh, take place. Even the interaction, the simple interaction among all of us, um, usually it's considered as a, um, an education and a learning experiences. So, um, what should our audience know about AIMS? Um, other than this point, what AIMS really uh, stood for uh, from the start is to try to, in a, in a basic, simple uh, terms, to try to translate, if you would, um, what Triple IT has stood for for a long period of time. And that is uh, initially it was called Islamization of Knowledge, later on, um, it was called integration of knowledge, but in reality, it just means almost the same thing, which is, you know, the integration of the uh, wahi or the revealed knowledge uh, with the human intellect. Um, from that principle, which constitutes basically the philosophical underpinnings of advancing education in uh, Muslim societies, um, AIMS intended to operationalize this concept um, in educational um, settings. So um, it would actually reveal itself um, in a curriculum, as, uh, you know, whether it's higher education or K-12. And this is uh, one of the initiatives that AIMS would strive for. Um, it could manifest itself in recommendations for specific public policies as it relates to education and other issues. Uh, it could reveal itself in the leadership that uh, we provide as, as, as people, as Muslims, um, who believe you know, in the integration uh, concept. Uh, it could reveal itself in the pedagogy and the way uh, we actually teach uh, each in, in his or her profession. Um, and all of these manifestations or different manifestations of the uh, integration of knowledge uh, concept is basically uh, what AIMS um, is all about. So um, AIMS consists also from what Triple IT has been doing all along functionally, uh, you know, what Triple IT has been doing, it's a research center mainly, uh, and that research get, uh, first we conduct the research, second is uh, we publish it, uh, we translate it, we have uh, publications that uh, span uh, 42 different languages, 
Um, so uh, these are all the functions. And then we have a teaching function uh, through the Fairfax Institute and through summer schools and winter schools. And we've been doing this for a long time. So this is what IIIT has been doing all along. Uh, Ames it, it has adopted the same uh, pretty much functions. So we have a research program and uh, with a specific objectives, which I'm uh, you know, going to uh, uh, explain here. Um, I think probably the best reference for that is the Mapping the Terrain report. Uh, it lay out um, the objectives of, of that specific research projects, but it's also aims research in general. Um, and I would um, encourage you uh, to, to refer to it, but I could summarize it here in a few points. Um, one of AIMS research program objectives would be to contribute to the integration of knowledge, um, intellectual discourse, and its manifestation in thought and academic disciplines uh, through different approaches. Um, these approaches or entry levels uh, have been worked on uh, throughout the years at IIIT, um, and many of them are familiar um, to you. Uh, the higher intents of, of uh, um, of Sharia or of, uh, uh, of the Dean in general, uh, the Maqasid approach. Uh, then there's the universal Quranic values approach, uh, which our friends in Morocco have been working on for a long time and uh, other offices too uh, of IIIT. Uh, the Quranic norms or the Sunan um, and then the Quranic concepts of the Mafahim. All of these are entry points to the integration of knowledge. In other words, the integration of knowledge uh, is a concept and is, is, a, is, a, is an intellectual discourse. Uh, it's a framework. And then within that, uh, you would have to have some sort of entry levels in order for us to be able to apply it either to social disciplines in academia uh, or to social phenomena in general uh, through empirical research and otherwise. The second objective of, of our AIMS uh, research is to provide evidence-based knowledge on advancing education in Muslim societies. And that's uh, represented by mapping the terrain and whatever else uh, that as an empirical research project and whatever else that uh, might come after as a result of that, uh, whether it's using the data itself or expanding the research project uh, to different uh, areas uh, of research. And then the third point uh, or the third objective is to empirically establish the relationship between the integration of knowledge uh, as an intellectual discourse and human development as a process and as an outcome of the learning experiences, um, whether it's formal or informal or, uh, or non-formal. The human development process, which could lead to the progression of people in a trajectory from uh, ethnocentric state of consciousness to the highest level of integration, which we called it uh, Tawhidi uh, state of, of, of consciousness. And we will elaborate a little bit more on this. Um, and I also hope to get a few questions on this point so we'll be able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, give it enough time uh, to explain. And Dr. Ilham is here, she will chime in. Uh, whenever it's needed, she's leading uh, this project, and I think she has more intimate knowledge to it than, uh, than myself. Uh, in other words, we not only address the issue of the integration of knowledge as a theoretical and philosophical model um, of learning and education, but also as an outcome manifested in people's lives. And that's the difference when we talk about the human development um, approach. Um, and uh, so it is a process in that sense, but it's also an outcome of education. Um, in other words, it becomes more of the goal uh, and the objective of the educational process, uh, but it has to be built into the educational process in order for it to be an outcome. Um, and we will explain this model in a little bit more details and uh, why we adopted it in the first place, uh, which goes again from the uh, uh, ethnocentric, uh, egocentric, ethnocentric state to world uh, centric and within that, the highest level, uh, we identify and add it to the model, uh, which is the Tawhidi state of consciousness. And then the fourth objective of our AIMS research is to contribute to the preparation of a new generation of researchers, intellectuals, educators, and uh, academics 
um, and different disciplines who would be part of advancing education in Muslim society in, in many different ways along the spectrum of human endeavor. Um, without that, obviously, uh, it, it, uh, this project will be an orphan um, and it will not have the ability to continue uh, unless you groom new uh, talents. And um, I, I, I mean, I could go on and, and uh, uh, also explain a little bit of the current projects that we, uh, under AIMS, are sponsoring, and maybe briefly, because I know I took already 15 minutes of the time. That's okay. Uh, and then the dissemination of that research. Uh, so just explain maybe uh, to you, um, beyond the, the conceptual framework, how we are implementing uh, the project within the organizational structure of IT. So um, the current research projects that we have sponsored, uh, one is mapping the terrain, and this is an empirical study. Uh, again, Dr. Alham is leading this effort and she can explain it. Uh, we started with, um, uh, I believe the first one that came out was 16 um, countries. Um, uh, and it's an annual um, uh, large scale uh, survey project. Um, Quite few of you, uh, you know, in, in our offices across the world are familiar with it. Um, so this is uh, one area of research. And again, uh, we are intending to um, obviously expand this project um, and as much as possible, uh, you know, uh, uh, move it on to, to, to other areas of interest. Um, then the second uh, project we're sponsoring under AIMS is the Quranic Values, the Universal Quranic Values Research Group. Um, and this group is in Morocco, mainly specialized in both education and Islamic studies uh, and the interactions of, uh, of both. And this is to feed into mapping the terrain project, which is the empirical uh, part of, of, uh, of AIMS, um, simply through uh, defining what these values that we work, uh, we're working on from a Quranic perspective, uh, which is for us, it means also that um, it's not an assumption, but it's a proven assumption that th these values are also universal uh, in that sense. So um, that's, that's kind of what, what we are there. Uh, then there are research groups in uh, Europe uh, under Dr. Bitti's leadership, and those groups are working on mainly looking at the same paradigm or entry level, which is the universal Quranic values, and look into, um, uh, and then the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, um, uh, the Islamic worldview of, of integration of knowledge, basically, that we have developed. So through that, um, you look into the Islamic heritage and we look into Western heritage, heritage through the same lens, through the value, uh, Quranic universal, uh, universal Quranic value, um, lens um, and look into different, uh, you know, positions, whether it's in fiqh, hadith, and otherwise. Uh, and there are quite few research groups uh, under the umbrella of AIMS uh, that are actually working on this. Uh, then there's another research group in Egypt. Uh, their main work is on international relations and political science. Uh, there's a conference uh, that's been planned for to take place in September, this coming September, uh, uh, God willing, in Morocco. Uh, that might change, of course, but for now it is planned still for uh, September to take place. And this is kind of culmination of literally 30 something years of work on international relations uh, through the integration of knowledge paradigm. Again, the relationship to uh, Aims obviously because uh, these are, you know, academic disciplines mainly, and they take place in higher education and formal education uh, setting, and also for intellectuals who are mainly academics and most of the time are. So it's very much in line with what Aims is all about as an initiative. Uh, then we have a um, in India actually uh, uh, through our uh, uh, partnership there. Uh, with IOS, uh, IOS uh, there's a center for uh, universal Quranic values that has been established this year based on our discussion uh, with them. 
then we had an annual conference back uh, in 20, uh, last year uh, in 2019, uh, which was held in uh, uh, Istanbul, Turkey. And we were planning another conference for 2020, unfortunately, with whatever it is that's going on right now. We were all aware of COVID-19 and coronavirus. Um, we thought that we would put it off this year since it's up in the air and we're not sure whether it's going to take place or not. Uh, so this has been uh, postponed for this year and uh, hopefully we'll get back to it by 2021. Um, then there is also a curriculum that we're working on, which is kind of a general ed curriculum as is defined within the US model of higher education, which consists of the first two years um, of uh, um, an undergrad degree uh, or undergrad program. And we're working on develop a, this curriculum. This is a long-term uh, program. It might take a year from now to develop, but I think it's, it's a great initiative uh, once we get it done. And of course, embedded in that, uh, the assessment and evaluation piece, because it's not going to be perfect. And, and you know, we'd be happy if we get 50, 60% of what it is that we're intending to do uh, within that uh, range. Um, so this is also uh, taking place. There is, uh, we have not started that, but there is a very uh, good possibility that we also would start a K-12 curriculum, um, either directly or maybe a partnership with uh, someone else who's working uh, towards something similar to what it is that we're trying to um, accomplish here. And it's all based on um, again, the uh, uh, integration of knowledge uh, uh, paradigm or intellectual discourse and the different manifestations of that. Um, then, of course, the assessment and evaluation research, which uh, Dr. Ilham also uh, has headed and she developed um, separately uh, uh, some tools and mechanisms of uh, doing so. And that would be applied to uh, uh, the, for the time being for, uh, on the undergrad level. And it's separate from, uh, uh, by the way, the map in the train uh, uh, program or project. Um, and then there are, of course, the ongoing uh, several uh, conferences, seminars, and otherwise. And these are all events. Uh, but the dissemination of this research, of AIMS research, uh, theoretical and empirical, uh, is taking place through different modalities and different modes. Uh, we've established a new journal. Uh, it's called GEMS. Um, Journal of Education and Muslim Societies. It's published jointly with uh, IUP, Indiana University Press. Um, Dr. Ilham has been leading an effort also to present in major academic conferences. Now that we have a language uh, to speak, which is the empirical research with data to support what it is that we're claiming or talking about. So it's no longer a theoretical discussion on uh, the integration of knowledge as a concept or a discourse, uh, but actually as a manifestation of which in, uh, a, uh, uh, in an empirical uh, uh, research and, and uh, project and data uh, that could be communicated to the academic community through different platforms. Uh, there's also a book series published jointly with Indiana University Press and the first volume, edited volume should be coming soon, uh, Hope in Education. Uh, and Dr. Ilham is leading that effort too. Um, uh, our scholars, of course, uh, published and has published on the program that we're doing in major academic journals and have been participating again in conferences and otherwise. Uh, their policy recommendations to decision makers in Washington that's based on the same concept and we've been grooming this through a partner organization. Uh, uh, the um, uh, the sixth point is that uh, in terms of dissemination, uh, the teaching programs, uh, so between summer school, winter school, uh, webinars such as this, uh, panel discussions and uh, other teaching programs, we have been disseminating the integration of knowledge concept. Obviously, IT has been working on this for a long time, uh, but we have added a few new uh, venues under the umbrella of AIMS. Um, joint teaching programs such as the program that we have started last year with American University, which is a graduate program. Um, unfortunately, the participation in that program uh, was a little bit less than what we've expected. Um, hopefully in the future and in, in, in the uh, near future, we can revive the program through either an online platform or something else. Um, 
then of course the translation effort has been taken place and, and we're trying along with the, our uh, department publication and translation headed by our uh, two able uh, director and associate director, uh, Dr. Anas uh, Sheikh Ali and uh, Ubaid uh, Abbal, uh, the associate director of the department. Uh, who have been very helpful, of course, in, in uh, leading the publication effort and the translation. So um, uh, we're hoping that we establish a relationship with a, a, a translation uh, you know, center um, in Morocco where the translation of our work, particularly from English to Arabic and Arabic to English and French also for some of the European uh, teams are working in different European languages. So the translation part, uh, it's part and parcel of, uh, of the AIMS initiative. And uh, the more uh, we uh, uh, invest in this effort, uh, I think the better we are. Um, and these are all, again, uh, just kind of, of, of how the uh, AIMS project uh, research uh, has been disseminated. And I'll stop here. I'll take the second question. And I'm sorry, it took a lot longer than what I thought, but I'll be brief in the for the second and the third question. Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Alwani. Actually, you touched upon the second and third question I had in mind, and these two questions really address the way AIMS relate to the integration of knowledge, which you explained. And then the other uh, third question was regarding the framework and the human development approach and universal values. Would you like to say anything else on those two or we can or do you yeah. want to take the first question we have one question already. okay so just briefly i would say again the emphasis mainly uh if i if i can distinguish what aims is all about in two points is the first point which i um I, I think i emphasized and that's it's an extension of the integration of knowledge it's not a replacement of uh, and it's not uh, by any means um, a new direction for uh, IIIT. It's really building on the past, probably framing it differently again in terms of context as opposed to the process of um, education reform. But uh, to me, integration of knowledge, Islamization of knowledge uh, uh, synonymously was used with integration of social disciplines. And as far as I'm concerned, Social disciplines mean social disciplines that are academic and take place within formal education settings. As a matter of fact, AIMS um, initiative has expanded this concept into much more than that and included the formal, the informal, the non-formal, and everything that you could uh, call education and learning, uh, which, you know, it, to me, it, 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 it encompasses pretty much every effort of change and transformation uh, in a peaceful way, uh, other than obviously, you know, uh, the, uh, the other ways of, uh, of change that uh, people might take. But for us, this is basically the tool that we use. In terms of the relationship with the human development, the approach here, again, as I touched upon a little, uh, in, in my uh, initial remarks, um, it's a process and it's an outcome. So the emphasis here is not just on the concept and the conceptual framework and the uh, uh, reform of thought, but um, reform of thought as, or thinking as much as it is a reform of thought. So the reform of thinking means a change and transformation on the personal level that's reflected within our communities. In order for us to do this and in order for the education process to contribute to this, uh, we needed some sort of a model uh, that contribute to human development and makes it easier for us to adopt this um, as a, 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 a leading uh, a framework. So the human development piece is mainly to say that we're not only interested in the theoretical approach and discourse of uh, integration of knowledge, but in how it manifests itself in our communities, in our individuals, uh, uh, and and societal change and transformation. And this is kind of how I I would uh, put it because it, it, it's it's two pronged approach. It's no longer just working on thought, um, and we don't care how it takes place uh, in terms of social change because Triple IT stands for social change from the start. 
um, and the establishment of the triple IT as far as I, I can recall from the literature and from living uh, some of these experiences with the founders was about change and social transformation. It was not about producing books and articles and research uh, per se, but only as these, uh, the, this intellectual work uh, would contribute to the advancement of the Ummah. And that was the intention from the start. So in order for us to do this, under Ames umbrella, we made that link and connection uh, pretty much part and parcel of the effort as opposed to being left to chance. And that's how I would characterize it. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Alwani. We, uh, we can start and open it for Q&A. And I would appreciate if you all can bear with us as we feel the questions in the chat, but please feel free to, ch to start chatting with us and asking us questions. We have a question already and we'll start with this one. But I also want to make sure that you all understand that with recent uh, articles and news regarding the use of Zoom, uh, we were advised to use uh, the um, muting and uh, you know, lack of video to handle our webinars. And I really appreciate if your understanding of doing that. And we welcome any questions. So please, uh, you can start writing in the chat and, um, and we'll start with the first one. The first one, what are the possibilities of arriving at a common basic structure of education for the Muslims across the globe in post-viral world? I mean, uh, I think that's, I, I would, um, since you're asking about the possibilities, um, I mean, I, obviously I don't have a crystal ball of what's going to happen um, beyond this year, but what it seems to me uh, is that this is going to open an opportunity more so than before uh, to uh, globalization and uh, possibly to adopt a certain uh, model of education um, if it proves itself uh, to be uh, um, you know viable so I think the challenge for us as as as, uh, as Muslims all along and as an organization uh, triple IT as an organization was to be able to uh, compete with everyone else with the uh, best of the past. As a matter of fact, this is why um, at the time, you know, in the 80s, uh, uh, Washington was uh, chosen and the United States was chosen as a place for the headquarter of Triple IT. Is, um, so we would take on the challenge of um, uh, Western thought at its best or, you know, uh, human thought, really, um, if you would, uh, at its best. So it wasn't to shy away from anything. So I think it depends on, the possibility would depend on uh, how uh, competitive we can be and uh, how viable the model of education that we are going to present to the world. And if it is, I think there's a good possibility uh, that this is going to go uh, across the world and, and Muslim areas and actually more kind of globally, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, Dr. Alwani, the next question is, uh, is it possible that we can near, in the near future establish high-level research centers under East Africa Islamic Universities? Uh, of course, and we would welcome that. Um, and the, all, the whole idea of, of, um, uh, of AIMS, again, to, um, is to sort of put a little bit more uh, focus on the research uh, program uh, that's been taking place at Triple IT. So it becomes more of not so much to exclude anything, but we, in my opinion, um, we have passed the stage of uh, only supporting, uh, you know, our folks and our, uh, uh, you know, fellow researchers and, and uh, otherwise in uh, many different Muslim countries 
uh, but to the point where is not only to provide them with opportunities to publish and um, and for, for 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 their voices to be heard, but more so uh, to make sure uh, that we're actually investing um, all of our resources and uh, in one direction. You know, um, not to you know this direction doesn't mean that uh, it's it's not too narrow where uh, you know we're excluding um, uh, a lot of, of other viable research but in my opinion it's wide enough but at the same time give us as an organization a little bit more uh, focus to be able to advance um, our agenda so definitely yeah we to, to uh, in, in short to answer the question we are open to that okay and we'll come in. thank you dr ali for this question so what are some of the future plans for AIMS uh, research, if any? I think I, I touched upon this in an hour. So we have the, there's the empirical, there's the theoretical uh, research uh, portion. The theoretical pretty much is, is the integration of knowledge. Uh, but we, you know, our focus right now on the uh, uh, universal values as an entry point. Um, the, um, uh, you know, the, the Islamic paradigm, uh, if you would, uh, um, or Mandur um, al-Habari, you know, the, the, the world of view, the Islamic world of view has been developed and talked about for a long period of time. Um, probably, you know, the best manifestation of this that I could um, say that IT has published and put out is uh, a Tawheed uh, book by Ismail Farouqi, which lay out really the, the Islamic worldview um, and what it means um, in, in general and its, implica and its implication in, in, in life uh, and uh, in education, um, in my judgment. So, so uh, this is kind of out of that, uh, you would um, take different approaches, um, obviously, to make this happen. Uh, the approach that we um, are um, emphasizing right now is more kind of the one that depends on values. But again, values do not mean uh, values in the narrow sense. Uh, it's actually include um, what um, the Quran called a sunan uh, or the norms. Um, and, and these are also, uh, this is also uh, to a large extent, um, has been promoted, I would think, by uh, many publications of Triple IT um, as an entry point to the integration of knowledge paradigm and the application of which in social disciplines and, um, and in life in general. Um, and then uh, this also includes the concepts because under each value, values not in the moral uh, and ethical sense only, uh, values is just like, uh, you know, take al haq for example, or justice, or um, any of these, uh, you know, values, so-called values. Uh, they're not just in the narrow sense of, of the word, but they actually include concepts. They include uh, the uh, uh, sunan, as I said, the entry level. They stemmed out of our Islamic worldview uh, that has been developed broadly for a long uh, period of time. Um, and it, it, it also uh, uh, um, in, in includes under each value the concepts that are related to it. So it's more kind of a, a comprehensive view of what values are as opposed to, uh, you know, in the narrow moral and ethical sense in that sense. All right. Thank you, Dr. Alwani. Next question is, do you have plans to implement the integration of knowledge in U.S. schools or uh, institutions? So uh, this is more, um, and thank you for that question. Uh, this is more kind of on the practical, I guess, pragmatic uh, level. So I would say our intention, not necessarily uh, to run schools and, and uh, you know, universities per se, uh, sometimes you do need a model to, um, you know, mm -hmm. present the model of education that you want to show the world um, and you want to make sure that it's like a lot of school. 
you want to make sure that it works um, and you want to make sure that all the aspects of uh, what this is all about um, have been covered, particularly if we're talking about empirical research. So I would say that maybe it's not, um, you know, we, we can be as ambitious as, as, as we want, but at the same time, uh, we need to be pragmatic. This is uh, still, uh, you know, one organization. So I think we, our work has to be through, uh, in many cases, partnership with others, uh, associations maybe, um, uh, other than, you know, directly managing or uh, uh, try to be in control of other organizations. So most probably the way it works is that we present what we have as data and people are free to adopt it. Uh, but at the same time, we will push for our model to be adopted by, by as many uh, schools and universities and organizations as, as possible. But the crux of the matter is how successful we are in this effort is what's going to make the difference. Because again, it's not an ideological push as much as it is uh, a, a, uh, a practical and pragmatic uh, uh, push for something that's actually going uh, to work. Uh, we think that is going to work in different contexts, global context, as well as for Muslim societies, which is the, to me, is the, the basic uh, definition of you know. Okay, so there's a comment and the question, and we will go to the question how can triple IT contribute with these emerging examples globally? And the person gave Qatar and Turkey as examples regarding integration of knowledge. How can triple IT take a, I guess, more of a global role regarding integration of knowledge and take a leadership role as role models? Um, I think, you know, Triple IT as an organization, again, I mean, we've gone through different phases, but in general, I think we uh, have been as an organization uh, pretty much working globally uh, uh, since the start, since the beginning. Uh, yes, as I mentioned, our headquarters here in the U.S., but our effort has been spanning the whole uh, globe from uh, East Africa to Malaysia to Indonesia to Central Asia to Turkey to Europe to other places wherever we um, and the, the, the um, Arab world. Uh, wherever we can find the right mix of resources uh, that could help in any project we work, uh, we work on. So I think our effort as an organization um, has always been uh, global and uh, we look for talents everywhere in the world, regardless of um, uh, where they may be. And we look at the uh, dissemination of, of uh, the, our research and what we work on and our programs uh, across the globe. Um, and, you know, I think this, uh, for AIMS, this is, is going to be part and parcel of our effort too. It's a global effort uh, from the start. But of course, the success of this, obviously, uh, will, will differ. So we might be um, very successful in establishing ourselves in a certain region or a certain area um, in the world, as opposed to another. It depends on the opportunities. The Arab world, because of the political environment there um, and some of the restrictions on um, intellectual freedom, academic freedom, uh, we haven't really had a whole lot, I would say, of, of successes in, in many countries. But um, I think that, uh, you know, our effort uh, has been always globally, and I would stress that part. Thank you. The next one, what opportunities do you foresee for the AIMS work to be extended into the informal education sector in forging an educational culture of transformative learning? What opportunities for C4Ms for um, to go into the informal education? So the informal, non-formal um, education, uh, our focus 
despite our focus uh, right now more on the formal piece, but as an extension of the formal education, we're also working on youth development uh, program uh, based on, on very much similar concepts. Um, the reason for our focus on the undergrad uh, level right now um, as opposed um, or as an extension of our work previously with graduate uh, programs uh, is to bridge that gap. Um, so we have uh, opportunities with youth programs uh, that we're actually working on. We have um, opportunities through parenting. Uh, Dr. Hisham Al-Khalid is, is leading the parenting program at IIIT for a long uh, period of time. Uh, and now we're trying also to uh, embed the concepts of values, although from the start, this was kind of the focus of it, but it's more so right now. So it's the same kind of paradigm of uh, the integration of knowledge, uh, but it manifests itself in, in different programs, training, uh, you know, uh, and development uh, also uh, programs, workshops and otherwise. So all of these are opportunities and venues uh, for us to expand our effort uh, way beyond the um, formal um, education piece. Uh, so uh, you're absolutely right. There are many opportunities and, and uh, maybe we need to do a lot more, uh, but the plan is to, to expand our effort uh, uh, much beyond the uh, formal education. All right. Next one is social change is the objective of triple IT, but political realities or arenas of the world cannot be avoided to do so. Is triple IT anyway trying to introduce its paradigm to different societies across the world? Um, our, you know, triple uh, IT has never been a political uh, organization. Uh, it's social change through education, uh, and this is mainly what IIIT stood for since the beginning. Uh, and that's part of why when we introduced the AIMS uh, initiative, we introduced it really with that spirit. We wanted to emphasize, uh, again, the context of our work instead of emphasizing the philosophy uh, of our work. So the philosophy was, you know, initially Islamization and integration as a way of, uh, you know, uh, of social um, change uh, within the uh, Ummah uh, and globally. So the Muslim Ummah and globally. Um, but the, uh, um, obviously, you know, the, the emphasis was on, the, uh, again, on the concept. Uh, under AIMS initiative, we're saying that the process actually and the context where this social change is going to take place is through education, not through political activism. Um, but we also know that without uh, some sort of, uh, after all, any political system manifests itself through policies, um, that uh, public policies that they uh, basically implement. So part of AIMS initiative is to uh, work with partner um, shifts such as the Center for uh, Public Policy, for example, to work on that aspect, to make recommendations, policy recommendations, uh, uh, mainly to American uh, decision makers and policy makers, uh, because we think that the influence uh, from the United States on uh, our Muslim societies is probably sometimes uh, greater than the internal um, uh, you know, uh, forces that um, are at work uh, there politically. Uh, so this is kind of um, our intention and part of the AIMS program is to develop policy recommendations, um, present them to the U.S. policymakers in a way that uh, make them, uh, um, you know, more acceptable. Uh, but uh, in reality, uh, it takes into consideration an empathetic approach uh, that is best and on, you know, from both sides. And it's a win-win solution as opposed to be 
on the expense of, uh, you know, our advancement here in the U.S. supposed to be on the expense of, of others, but more of a mutually uh, beneficial uh, policies. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is what uh, I would say. We're not excluding, um, you know, what we exclude is political activism, uh, but our intellectual work does extend to uh, public policy recommendations, to make public policy recommendations to policymakers, and then they would take it from there as a research center, as an intellectual center, as an academic center, you know. Uh, we're not uh, an advocacy place, we're not political uh, place and organization, we don't interfere with politics, we don't use it as a mean of social uh, change and transformation. Uh, but we are in the area of uh, thought and, and, uh, and thinking, uh, uh, which we're hoping that it would be reflected through education um, in individual and community and social change. Okay, Dr. Ahmed, can you talk more about your K through 12 future initiatives? What are your thoughts on that? You mentioned it earlier. Someone is asking, can you talk more about that? Um, mapping the terrain has been a um, an empirical research that was conducted, um, you know, in K twelve um, environment uh, plus college environment, early college environment. Um, so, I I think you know in terms of future plans, um, as I said, we, we you know, hopefully at the end. I would imagine that we will invest in um, either adopting a model of education from the standpoint of the integration of knowledge uh, that we're working on, uh, or possibly develop uh, something, um, uh, you know, uh, as a as a greenfield um, from scratch. Um, but uh, for the time being, it is in the plan, uh, but we have not really started working on that other than collecting data and, and conducting the uh, map in the terrain research within uh, K-12. We are establishing partnerships with, um, with the schools. Uh, we had, and Dr. Enham could uh, uh, also speak on this, uh, we had a few workshops that were for teachers, uh, teacher training, uh, K-12 teacher training and, uh, uh, you know, weekend schools. Uh, here in the U.S., uh, where um, again, I mean, the, the 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 training was based on the same concepts, uh, you know, that we've talked about the universal Quranic values, uh, you know, uh, in a broader sense, uh, as a manifestation of the integration of of knowledge in one form or another. Okay, and we have uh, time for a few more questions. Um, how does AIMS focus on universal values and creating a model for educational account, for education, account for the different geographical contexts of the Muslim world and their schools of thought? I think, again, I mean, uh, we, we are talking about a, um, a, a framework, um, a generic, if you would, a generic, more kind of universal uh, framework. The uh, manifestation of this in local, um, you know, communities across the world obviously is going to be different. That's why uh, we don't necessarily intend to uh, directly sponsor institutions, whether it's K-12 or, you know, universities across the world. Uh, these are basically left to the um, local uh, forces, the local communities uh, to play with. But for us to provide a framework, a general framework, I think it's, it should be um, uh, doable. Um, the, um, uh, you know, a lot of the educational uh, theories, if you would, um, that have been successful in one area, um, a lot of time could be adopted uh, with some tweaking, obviously, in other areas. So, you know, when you take, uh, for example, some of the successful models and we say, well, Sweden has a successful model of, of, uh, of education or Singapore has a successful model of education. Obviously, you tweak it when you apply it here to the United States, for example, in, in my context here. Um, but 
um, at the end, you could come up with an educational philosophy and educational uh, framework uh, that uh, is global in nature, uh, but at the same time has the ability flexible enough to be applied in different contexts, taking into consideration the local environment and local cultures and otherwise, but it's not going to be, in my opinion, drastic change where it's going to throw the model, uh, you know, um, away just because of these local differences. Because after all, uh, to me, those values, that's why we call them universal values. So they are Quranic uh, in the sense of where the source of interpreting these values for us as we apply them to Muslim societies, because again, this is advancing education in Muslim societies and that's been our focus. Uh, but in the meantime, they're universal in that sense. Uh, they're not necessarily, you know, uh, localized. And from that perspective, I think if we are able to come up with this educational model that is based on universal values, we would be able to present it as a model, not only to Muslim societies, but uh, globally. All right, and then we had a few questions specific to certain areas, like there is a question regarding uh, working in um, areas like West Africa and uh, another one on universities in the Caribbean. Can you say something about to address those specific questions? Are you planning to work or collaborate with universities in different areas around the world? So like I said, our intention as far as AIMS uh, project is concerned, um, I mean, even conducting the, the um, map and the terrain uh, survey project, um, you know, the, um, um, we have conducted this research in 16 countries this year, uh, and Dr. Enham could elaborate a little bit more on this. Uh, we have only 12 uh, that where we collected data and that's just because of the practicalities of what's happening right now and, and some of the restrictions we have because of COVID-19 um, and the coronavirus. So, uh, you know, uh, in terms of our openness, again, to work uh, across the globe, across the Muslim world, we are very much open and welcoming any effort. Um, I mentioned uh, India, for example, and this is just was based on um, our realization of uh, the talents that the, that you know that country has, um, and our ability to work there, and um, for our uh, partner, uh, Dr. Mansoor, uh, in um, in India, for example, and uh, he proposed you know to 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 establish a center on Quranic values there, because uh, he thought that they have the talents and and they have the academic. Uh, uh, you know, resources uh, where they can actually invest um, in, in such an effort. So we welcome any effort uh, from uh, our affiliate offices currently, uh, our network of, of individuals and academics across the world. We are very much open and, and uh, welcome any contribution from any of you um, across, across the world, across the globe to contribute, whether on the, um, uh, the empirical research piece, uh, the theoretical research piece, and uh, all of its entirety, um, we, we very much would like, um, actually, that we will come in and, and we encourage it. Um, you know, we, we can do this in, in a formal uh, format through uh, a memorandum of understanding and, um, you know, direct agreements with universities or schools. We can do it in, informally through, um, if you're, for example, uh, a, a, you know, an academic at, at a university or a teacher at a school or something, and you can open a door for us, certainly we welcome this and, and we're open to it. Um, this might expand our project, uh, map in the terrain, for example, uh, into areas that we haven't been uh, exposed to and had some work there. And um, also it would open, uh, you know, the program to anyone who would like to participate. This is a global effort and it's a global initiative. And this is the intention uh, of the project. Uh, Triple IT has always worked with the assumption of, of an open system as opposed to a closed system. In other words, we are a nonprofit entity. We don't intend to, uh, 
uh, neither make money or uh, you know build our reputation on one thing or another. This is not the intention. The intention um, at the end, as I mentioned, uh, is to contribute to the advancement uh, of Muslim societies across the uh, across the globe. Um, so yeah, definitely we we welcome this uh, effort. And keep in mind, you know, uh, I, I uh, uh, maybe uh, should have said something about this. Uh, you know, the um, the beautiful thing about this program and this project uh, is that um, and Triple IT did a lot of philosophical, uh, theoretical, uh, uh, you know, uh, thought dependent um, research uh, projects in the past. Uh, probably the, the, the only, not only, but one of the things that kind of sort of new uh, with this initiative is the empirical research component, uh, which is really um, hasn't uh, been done uh, um, at the level that uh, Ames has initiated, uh, which is more kind of a large scale empirical research across um, the globe. Um, so the empirical uh, piece, I think it gives uh, many academics the ability to not only work with us, but be able to publish in mainstream journals because we have been and we've been able to, um, to generate interest. Uh, so I think this, this is going to give an opportunity from uh, the perspective of uh, the academics to actually participate at different fronts, those who are more interested from the Islam, to develop the Islamic perspective uh, uh, of IOK, of the integration of knowledge uh, paradigm or uh, you know, uh, discourse, um, and those who are interested in uh, uh, pure social sciences um, and you know the development of social sciences from the perspective of the integration of knowledge. And those who are interested in empirical research uh, of a practical, yeah, you know, nature, uh, um, they're all, you know, aspects of aims, and and we would welcome the contributions in all of these um, different fields. Okay, so um, another question on global research outputs from integration of knowledge and aims experiences and how they can contribute to humanity challenges of poverty, climate change, and environmental governance issues? Um, to that question, I mean, I think there's no, um, the nature of any organization is that uh, you need to somehow have some sort of a focus on what it is that uh, you want to do. So we cannot be, um, in my opinion, everything to everyone. But at the same time, what we're working on to me is, is, is more of a paradigm uh, to world of you at the end. Uh, so that's what integration of knowledge is all about. All it says is that, you know, um, the intellect is not the only source of knowledge, but there's another sort, uh, source of knowledge uh, for uh, Values and, and uh, concepts and uh, norms and and and, uh, and everything else that has to do with that. Uh, uh, if you want uh, to, to say in, in in a general sense, a human paradigm or uh, world of view. So in that sense, in my opinion, I mean this contributes obviously uh, to uh, climate change. Part of the values we work on, and again, values are only important to us and our empirical research showed part of that, but it was kind of a forced um, implication as supposed to be part of the design process of our research um, at the time. That values are, there is a correlation between uh, specific values and the uh, advancement of the human development along that trajectory from egocentric, ethnocentric, world-centric. And the world-centric piece, um, including the Tawhidi state of consciousness, um, has in it the uh, uh, the concept of khilafa. You know that we are uh, stewards of the universe. So it has the environment, for example, in it, and the protection of the environment as 
uh, a piece and part and parcel of the model of human development that uh, we have adopted. Um, so, um, and I, again, I encourage you to read the uh, Map and the Terrain Report because it makes that correlation pretty clear. So these values that we adopt include values that has to do with the stewardship and that includes the environment and includes the universe at large and it's the, the, world, the, the world of view, the integration of knowledge, the world of view itself, the Islamic world of view of integration of knowledge uh, doesn't include that aspects of it. So I think, you know, indirectly, it would have not probably be through, uh, you know, uh, direct sponsorship, if, if that's the question of uh, environmental projects or, uh, uh, you know, otherwise, but indirectly you're presenting a certain paradigm and the adoption of this paradigm at different levels, at the policy level, as I, I mentioned a little bit, uh, uh, I think, and public policy doesn't include, you know, environmental policies and otherwise, um, I believe this could extend uh, very well into different um, areas of, of uh, uh, social activism, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be direct sponsorship by us. Okay, there's a question on pushback regarding the idea of universal values in non-Muslim societies. I would also ask, you know, did you face pushback regarding the idea of universal values in Muslim or non-Muslim communities and how would you handle the pushback? Well, I guess it depends of, uh, on the nature of that uh, uh, pushback. Um, I think, you know, um, in Western societies such as the um, US, uh, where we are, uh, you know, there's a, a, what we are introducing um, is a, a model of human development um, through value and, uh, uh, you know, uh, education. And it's not just moral education in that sense. We were uh, very careful not so much to uh, compartmentalize ourselves in one camp or another, uh, because, you know, values a lot of time are associated with conservatism, with religious, uh, you know, uh, sort of with, with a certain faith or another, uh, and it uh, might not be uh, perceived to be neutral. So in that sense, yeah, you, you're going to probably have some uh, pushback. Uh, but I think dealing with it is, um, you know, you deal with it on the uh, in Muslim societies um, and in Western societies, you know, in general, uh, by proving that it actually works. I mean, the world right now facing uh, pandemic uh, of a nature that we haven't seen for a long time, uh, you know, since 1918, 19, um, 1919, uh, when the uh, Spanish influenza uh, pandemic uh, was uh, prevailing. And this manifests the itself and how humanity is dependent uh, on each other. There's no one has been spared uh, from this pandemic. Uh, you know, heads of states to, to the poorest uh, country in the world. Uh, so I think this manifests, uh, you know, how important values are, you know, values of empathy, values of forgiveness, values of, uh, you know, helping each other. Um, and all of these values um, are universal values in that sense. So I think eventually uh, what is going to make this pushback less uh, uh, important uh, is to be able to prove that this model does work and it does contribute to the betterment of society. Because after all, uh, as we believe as Muslims, you know, religion didn't come uh, just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or for, uh, uh, you know, his benefit. Uh, it, it came to benefit humanity in general. Um, 
you know, and um, as long as we are able to prove that our model works for the betterment of humanity in general, uh, that pushback is, is going to be irrelevant. You, you're always going to have, you know, pushback no matter what your initiative might be. Uh, but you're rightly so. How we deal with it, I think, it's, it's the issue. But I think uh, we should move on. Um, and our work is going to prove itself, um, you know, uh, as long as it's workable, as long as it, it, it does uh, result in, uh, uh, in, in good outcomes, uh, people will adopt it. I don't think that they, they're going to have a problem with that. Okay, and I think we'll take the last question. Do you expect and encourage empirical work on values in connection with other areas of life and professional work? And since I know this is coming from Dr. Aid, he has in mind like social workers, is it worth it to go and you know explore the same survey and doing it with other people, therapists, social workers, not necessarily just as schools or universities? Yeah, absolutely. I think we will. Again, this is just a, a uh, what we hope um, to do eventually is that any of you who would like to extend our work, uh, this organization, the way I perceive it from an, an organizational structure standpoint, is a network organization. So we don't want to directly, and we cannot, sponsor every activity that. Uh, is, is, is possibly fall within the AIMS initiative. So it's mainly an initiative and that's what it is. In other words, it's a world of view, um, it's work in progress. Um, our work is done when every one of you who are interested in this and uh, possibly you know, adopt this model in your own profession, in your own field, um, and take it from there. So eventually the success of Triple IT is by becoming a resource to all of you, as opposed to uh, an organization, uh, you know, an organization that sponsor a project or uh, just be, uh, you know, known for a specific project. We want to be a resource for all of you, uh, each in uh, his or her own uh, field. So if your field is social work and you see a value in this paradigm to be applied, certainly this is our intention if that's the question. But at the same time, again, we cannot be everything to everyone. We will give all the support that's needed, uh, certainly to extend this survey, for example, or mapping the train to different fields and different, uh, uh, you know, areas. Uh, we don't this is part of why we define education formal and non-formal, uh, informal and non-formal, uh, simply to include every aspect of human activities and endeavors, uh, because any interaction such as the interaction we have or when you talk to someone, it's a learning and educational experience, uh, no matter what uh, and how, what shape it, it might take. Uh, so that includes all of that. And um, I'm hopeful that uh, uh, triple IT with this initiative becomes more of a uh, um, again a resource to all of you um, as opposed to uh, um, and, and a support um, as opposed to being you know uh, the organization that sponsored every activity of this initiative. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed Alwani, for taking time and uh, being with us here on this webinar. I hope you found it as insightful as I did. I know Dr. Alwani is busy and we thank him again for the time and for all the thoughts on AIMS and hopefully um, some of you or all of you, I would encourage you really to check our website. And one thing you could do for the empirical research mapping the terrain is actually to recommend the use of our data set that's also on the website. And we would like to spread the word as much as you can regarding our work, the empirical and the theoretical and all the other uh, initiatives that Dr. Alwani addressed. And I also would like to let you know that we are recording this uh, webinar and script of it or the whole thing we'll have to see uh, will be on our website as well. 
and uh, stay tuned for our next webinar. And if you have recommendations for someone to speak as our guest, please uh, do email me or email Ames Research. Um, also, don't forget to uh, join our newsletter. I'm getting a message here from uh, Sister Salwa saying, it's linked to the website, so please join our newsletter. We, this is our way of letting you know of what's new at Triple IT and keeping you uh, connected with us. Uh, Dr. Elwani, any final words or thoughts? Well, now I just would like to thank all of you who participated in this webinar and thank you for your time. Uh, thanks for the questions and we are very much open um, again to, to any of you and, and within your circle of, of uh, acquaintances, acquaintances, contacts, professional, um, you know, professionals in your network uh, to actually um, uh, you know, put a good word uh, for the project as you see it, um, and uh, let us move on. Thank you so much, and please Thank stay you. safe and stay well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Inham, mm -hmm. and thanks for your team for organizing this event. Our pleasure. Thank you so much.